actually three different, pro or actually four different projects that are going on right now. So the main goal is to make these coats, which is right here. So what's happening right here is inspection before they get top stitched and then their buttons on. And then what you can see over here is they've laid out this material and they're making cat trap covers. And this is the marker that's on top of all the layers of fabric that's getting ready in the process of being cut. Marking and remarking the shirt. So what we're making here are um, our transport pads for kittens who are um, who are found in that sort of trap and neuter and release program. Uh, we're just getting them cut. You're just getting cut. Okay. We're getting. So once they're done cut, just grab them and give them to Diana we'll or Jamie. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Cool. Thanks. You guys are doing wonderful. The reason that we make cat trap covers is for the trap, neuter, and release program. So the cats won't go into the cage unless they have a cover over it. And this way, the cats are also not scared once they're in it. So there's covers for them, and then there's also beds that go inside of them, which these ladies down here are cutting, and these ladies down here are sewing. So these are the beds that go in of it. It just keeps them warm and from sliding around in it. This is from our previous boot camp. We it was the first time that we had made pants, so we weren't sure how off how many we could make, and we made too many. And we weren't able to finish them, so they're be currently being finished now with some of the participants that returned from our last boot camp as well. Um, so there's there's a lot of different things going on and we have a lot of helping hands. Over here, we've got Sarah and Tanya and they are taking the coat lining and the coat shell have been sewn together and they're turning all the corners so that they can be, they look pretty. So they're getting the piece that's like this. This is the like, lining this is the shell and they're turning these points out here do you want to show one tanya sure um so we are just turning the points out and, and trying to get a crisp point and uh and then passing it on to quality control this one's ready to go Start coming apart, so right. that's nope. behind what we're thinking about. She's just cutting pieces and running our Eastman straight neck They use the clamps to keep all the pieces stabilized while the knife is moving. When we take sign up for the boot camp, we take anybody that has any skill. So we get a mix of people from all over the country and all over the world. And it, it makes it, that's one of our more challenging parts is that we don't know what backgrounds people have and if they have standards to work in a factory setting. So we give them, Kathleen gives them a questionnaire and then we rate them. But everyone that you see working here has little to none experience or a range of experience, actually. So we have some people that have never sewn before. This is Tamara's first time using a knife. We have some people that have never been in a factory. But then we also have, uh, like Mary, for example, who's been in the industry for over 25 years, and a few people that run their own factories, as well as many returning boot campers. So that's what makes up this interesting, that we're able to take a mixed bag of skill levels and put it into high quality. So Shirley here is joining the outside edge of the coats to the lining of the coats. And she's on a walking foot machine here. Um, and she's an experienced stitcher that we have. So most of the machinery that Kathleen has in the sewing room, they don't need, she doesn't need to have all of this for her normal business. She purchases this many machines so she can run this boot camp twice a year. So it's kind of amazing that that's what, why they're all here. 
So in here, everyone's assembling coats, and I'll just go through and we'll introduce you to them and talk to you what's going on. So Kira here is, uh, this is her third boot camp. She came to the first one, second one, and this one. She's an awesome home stitcher. And she's, uh, what are you doing right now? Closing the jackets. Okay, great. This is Tim. Tim was at the first boot camp and he was in the design phase for this boot camp. So how each boot camp works is there's a design phase where they plan out what they're making, they do all the sourcing, the industrial engineering, and then those people return for the production phase and they are the coaches for this phase. The, so Tim was our sewing manager for most of the weekend and now he's getting a chance to sew and he did a fantastic job at it. And one of the ways that we, uh, how we rate people and how they sew, because we have a variety of different operations, is we think about it in terms of coaching ability. Some people have sewn for 25 years and might need a lot of help learning how to do it because they're used to their own way that might be different than how we sew it here. Or they could be brand new and because this is the first time doing it, they're being taught the correct way, so they might not need that much supervision. So our coaching levels go lion, tiger, and bear. And we try to uh, move people up in levels as they go. So we give them operations that they can be successful at them, and hopefully by the end of the weekend they're, you know, doing really difficult bear operations where they're turning out the whole jacket. This is Glenn. This is our first boot camp. <laughs> this is Celeste. She is Kathleen's full-time employee, and she's also attaching the linings to the self of the jackets. And she's on, is this a needle feed machine? Yeah. This is a needle feed machine. So what that means is when you move the fabric through the machine, there's these things called uh, feed dogs, which pull the fabric through, and then the needle also moves, so they're moving together like this, whereas the rest of these machines, the needle is stationary and the feed dogs are moving the fabric through the machine. This is Hannah. This is her second boot camp. She did pants and is now doing coats. She's attaching the cuffs to the sleeves right now on my favorite machine, Buttercup. This is Emily, she's local to New Mexico and this is her first boot camp. She was part of the design phase and she's also attaching cuffs. This is Kat. Kat is sewing the lining to the self. This is her first boot camp but she's quite experienced in her. So some of our groups are working in tandem. So as Kat is finishing her operation here, she's passing it forward to Jay, who's then finishing that bundle, and it's going to go to another station. So generally, the bundles are supposed to stay together, but as we get further along in the process, we break them up so that we can get jackets through and finish on time so people can start finishing their coats. So this is Jay's second boot camp. She was here for coats last year, last fall. So every fall, we do coats, and then the past two springs, the first one we did dresses, and then we did kids' pants, and we'll eventually get it to where we'll have a consistent product. But part of the challenge of boot camp is finding the correct distribution and the cu our customers that we give these products to. Okay, so here we have Mary. Mary's a longtime pattern maker, production stitcher. She's, she's our mama bear. <laughs> And she's sewing the shells to the linings as well. She's working in tandem with Al. Oh, this is Mary's second boot camp? Yeah. Yeah, she did dresses with us last time. And she's working with Alice. And Alice is sewing on the cuffs. This is Alice's second boot camp as well. And if you look around the factory, there's all these lovely photos of past, present, current um, participants. and. True to Kathleen's self, the pictures are not all on one wall. They're taken, they are placed where they were taken. So they're in little silly areas. So this is our, um, our sample. This is our finished jacket. We can have the designers talk about it more. It doesn't have buttons on it yet, but you're supposed to have a sew-by sample in the sewing room so people can refer to it if and when they have questions. So it's a fully lined jacket. It's got a little breast pocket right here. And there's rivets here at the pockets to keep those stabilized. Um, we've got reflective tape. 
this ribbing here, this lovely yoke, and elastic here, and that's our jacket. If we finish a size 10, there's a couple people, including myself, that probably will fit into it. And we're doing four sizes, uh, 10, 8, 7, 6. Our goal is to obviously teach people they get first-hand manufacturing experience, but the main purpose is to make a high quality good for our customer. And if the educational experience gets in the way of that, it's about making our product. So the theory is about learning by doing. You know, you get trained to do the operation that you want to, but you don't necessarily get the full picture of everything at the start. We do do orientations in an overview, but really our goal is to make things here and to finish them. So the reason that some of these jackets are here and dresses are because they either didn't pass the final inspection because of a tiny flaw or they were samples that were made during the design phase. So this is one of the dresses that we made in the spring of 16 and it's got pockets. And I think this was a sew by sample, but this right here would not pass inspection because there's a little pucker right there. Um, so that's one of the designs. And that spring we had a very ambitious uh, project. We did three dresses, three colors, and three sizes, and we made almost 300 dresses. So this one's got a drawstring front, some pockets here, this piped collar, and yeah. yeah this is, oh, and then this was the third one. This one here, pockets. This was meant to go towards senior citizens and the community center that we were working with had lost their funding so we weren't able to distribute them and so Kathleen is still working on getting those distributed. Um, this was the coat that we made our first one, fall 2015, so it had a fully lined hood, reflective tape, zipper. There's welt pockets, and we actually have a welt pocket machine in the back that we can show you. This was awesome. I'd never seen a welt pocket machine before, and if you know how, how much work it takes to make a welt pocket, it's awesome to see that in progress. I was so obsessed with it. And I think, so that's about it. And then the back is like, the back is curved and shaped, so it covers your bum a little bit. And then there's more reflective tape. And we really like the reflective tape because you know, as kids are crossing the street at night, you know, you can really see them. But what we realized after the first one is that where we put the reflective tape is actually not advantageous because kids are wearing their backpacks. And so we've since switched to putting it on the sleeves to improve that. This is the second one we did. And the second one we did, we did it in two colors, so black and blue. Uh, fully lined again with this quilted lining. We've got some inseam pockets here, reflective tape, ribbing at the cuff, ribbing at the waist, and then this little hidden sleeve pocket for all of their treasures right here. Yeah, so we like the hidden pockets. We continue to add that. This one, you know, looks really good, but it wouldn't have passed inspection because the the uh, reflective tape is pointing up, but it really should be pointing down. So we're looking at every tiny little detail to give, make sure that we're giving out the highest quality goods. There's three Jamies with us today. All of us are currently in one room. Right here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, three of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is Jamie's first boot camp, as well as the Young's first boot camp, and Monica's. Monica, Hello. what are you doing over here? I am putting rivets on pockets. Oh, we didn't finish all of them? No, there was a missing bundle that didn't get riveted. Oh, Ooh. man. I know. Some of them have already been closed. Oh, goodness gracious. So yeah. Trickier. Okay. So that's a mistake. Glad you <laughs> got that on film. <laughs> What's Marilyn? What are you doing over here? Just checking on the ones that how many we have of the uh, unriveted that we're going to rivet. So they're not closed in that the armhole opening, yeah. so you have to go in there, and it's just more of a pain to do that. Yeah. So we okay. caught a few before they got closed, so those will be easy. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah. You know, if that's our biggest problem, though, that's pretty good considering. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. We've been learning so many things over the years that this boot camp has run so smoothly than it has in the past, and it's just amazing. 
Every year we have bottlenecks, which means that every operation has to go through this one stage. And a big, a big bottleneck for us in the past has been this pressing room. So this year Kathleen purchased an automatic fusing machine. So the pieces go in here with your cut piece and your fusible, and then this heats up and sets the fusible. And fusible is fabric that has sticky glue on it, and it makes the um, cut fabric piece stronger. And it was pretty funny. There's like 12 people in here, and they're putting them through here and taking them out. And it's like that scene in um, I Love Lucy where all the chocolates are coming off the conveyor belt, and they're just working so fast because you have to keep them in order. You have to make sure they're good, and it's loud. But this machine really helped us relieve our bottleneck of fusing. And as we fix one problem, we realize that that creates another problem down the line, and it creates another problem. So we realize that now the pressing is actually a bottleneck since we've got fusing covered. So each year we like learn new things and keep growing and it's really, it's awesome to watch. That's why I keep coming back on top of meeting all of the amazing people that's here. And we were discussing last night that it's amazing that we are making, you know, goods that are going to people in need, but most of the people while they're here, I don't think that that's their main reason. Although everyone does come for their own purposes, but really everyone here is special in the fact that they are in the clothing fashion industry but they really want to learn their like first hand manufacturing and I implore you to interview everyone and ask them why they are here and, and what they get out of it because it ranges so much and we get such a great group of people that we meet and we're like oh these are our people like you want to talk shop all day long and keep talking at dinner like yes please Let, let's keep doing it oh you want to do this for six days straight I love it you know, and not everyone has that in their communities at home.